Hey guys, welcome uh, back to this video. Uh, today we're going to look at um, an introduction to SDA, Survey Data and Analysis. This is an online software package that will allow us to do statistical work on some existing data sets. And the one that we're going to be most interested in and use most often is the General Social Survey, which we will have discussed in class. If you look in the browser uh, title window there, you can see that the main address for the software is sda.berkeley.edu. And uh, I'm, I have another URL I'll give you in a minute that will take you directly to the page that we're really interested in. But if you ended up on this page, you could read about what SDA is and the kinds of things uh, that it does. And of course, we're going to go through all of this in our labs and using these videos. I'm going to go ahead and click on the archive button here. That's going to take us to the different data sets that we can use. And you can see there's quite a few of them here. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. We have the American National Election Study, some census data, and so forth. But the one we want to look at is right here at the top. It's the General Social Survey Cumulative Data File 1972 to 2010. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And this takes us to our main analysis page. So there's a, a number of different features to look at on this page. Uh, if we look in the upper left hand corner over here, and I'm going to mouse over analysis, you can see that it brings down a little menu, drops a menu down and I can do frequencies across tabulation. That's actually the default window that's open. Uh, when you select one of these options here, like comparison of means correlation matrix, frequencies are uh, cross tabulation, it shows up over here in this part of the, uh, uh, the, the window. So that's the default is this frequencies cross tabulation program. Um, Besides doing an analysis of our variables, we can create new variables. We can recode existing variables or use a compute kind of statement, uh, kind of a computer programming statement to create new variables from existing ones. And we can even save these so we can come back to them later. We can download the data set, which we won't need to do, but if you wanted to uh, use Excel or some other statistical package, you'd be able to pull down onto your local computer uh, a subset of variables and cases. We can look at different code books, search, and then of course getting started is a little mini tutorial to help you. But we're hopefully going to get you through this um, using these videos. Now over here, where it says variable selection and selected, if you know the name of a variable, you can just type it in here and click on view and it will open up a window and show you some information about that variable. So I know that there's a variable called C-A-P-P-U-N. I'm just going to type that in. This is not anything you would know but I've used the data before so I you know know that it exists and I'm going to click on the view button and on one of my computers, it, it opens up a little browser window, kind of standalone. On this computer, the default um, in my version of Chrome is to open it up, as I have it said, is to open it up into a new tab. And it shows me that question 82B has the wording, do you favor or oppose the death penalty for persons convicted of murder? Notice that there is a typographical error here. It's actually death penalty. I get a frequency distribution down below and this lets me know that there's really two values that are important to me. Uh, value 1 is favor, value 2 is oppose. It tells me that 72.5% of the 32,219 people um, who responded to this question favor capital punishment and that 27.5% or 12,240 people of all the people who responded to this question oppose capital punishment. The total number of people who responded to this question, um, you'd have to do a little bit of math here. Um, this question, really we had 32,219 plus 12,240 people respond. You can see that 7,500 people were coded zero, which stands for IAP, inappropriate. 2,879 people were coded as 8, which means don't know, and 249 were coded 9, not applicable. 
Okay, so I'm going to close this window. I don't really need it anymore. But notice that when I put a variable name into this selected box and then click on View, I can see certain characteristics, a, a univariate frequency distribution of the variable. Down here are, is the complete code book for all the variables in the general social survey. It takes a while to kind of get used to the menus and submenus to find things, but they're actually organized pretty well for most purposes. So let's take a look at a few variables here. I'm going to come over here and click on this plus sign for respondent background variables which opens up a submenu and you can see in here I can select age, gender, race and ethnicity, education, military service and so on. I'm going to go ahead and take the submenu for age, gender, race and ethnicity and I might have to move this down a little bit to see what else is in here. There we can get almost everything onto the screen. You can see all the different types of variables that um, uh, have to do with this topic. Now the first thing in each of these is the mnemonic. So age is the mnemonic for this variable. That's how SDA understands the variable. That, that's, that's what it's called uh, for SDA. And then it has a short description, age of respondent. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, the sex variable. Now when I click on this, it's going to go ahead, you may have noticed, it put it into the selected box. So one option I have now is to just go ahead and view. Okay, we're back. I apologize. I lost all the audio for the remainder of the video, so I'm just going to redo what I had done earlier. And uh, let's just pick up where we left off. So we were going to look at the sex variable, which is over here. I found it uh, under the respondent background variables. And it, when I click on this line right here, it automatically places the mnemonic up here in the selected field. You know that if I click on view, it's going to go ahead and open up a window and show me the univariate uh, frequency distribution for this particular variable. But down here we have these other buttons that we can use that will copy the contents of the selected field over here where we can do more sophisticated analyses. So I'm going to click on row. It copies it, uh, the name of the variable over here. Now this isn't a big deal with uh, the variable sex, S-E-X, pretty easy to spell, easy to type. But for other variables uh, that have longer mnemonics, it might be uh, more difficult. You're more likely to make typographical errors. So that's a pretty nice little feature. If I use my enter key now, or if I scroll down a little bit, I can run the table. You'll see that this is going to produce pretty much the same information that we had before uh, by clicking the view button. Of course there's other things that we can do here which make, make using this uh, analysis box a little bit uh, better for us. So let's go back here. Let's take a look at another variable now. I'll come over here and select the race variable. and I'm going to copy it to row. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my enter key to see what this looks like. Okay, here's the uh, the race variable as measured by the General Social Survey. Now we'll talk about this more in class if we haven't already, but this is one of these variables that's a little difficult to know exactly what it means. There's three possible options for every respondent, white, black, and other. They're actually not clear cut. For example, the other category includes probably mostly Hispanic and, um, and uh, Asians, but uh, it's not broken down any further than that. It's also possible that Hispanic respondents are included under the white and black category. So it's a little bit of a mishmash for us. And um, what I'm going to do to make this variable maybe a little bit better to use and to demonstrate a feature of SDA, which is to recode, is I'm going to take, I'm going to make two categories of respondents, white respondents and non-white respondents. That is, I'm going to take anybody who's labeled as white and keep them in the white category and a, anybody who's labeled black and other and put them into the non-white category. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to come over here to race in my row uh, box and I'm going to enter the commands to recode this particular variable. So after race I'm now going to type an open parentheses and R colon. 
the R colon tells SDA that the next thing it's going to see is going to be a recode statement. And I'm going to recode the values of 1 to equal 1 and a semicolon. So I delineate my fields, my recode statements, by using a semicolon. And then I'm going to enter 2-3, and that's going to equal 2 and close parentheses. So looking at this again from uh, left to right, I use the, the variable name race, then a parentheses, R colon to tell SDA I'm going to recode. I'm going to let all the original values of 1 equal a value of 1, so that's not going to change. Those are the white respondents. I'm going to take all of the original values of 2 and 3, 2-3, two 2-3 two to 3 inclusive, and make those all equal to 2, and those will be the non-white respondents. I'm going to use the enter key here and we see our new frequency distribution over here. We can see that 85.5 percent of our frequency of our respondents are white and 14.5 percent are non-white. Now these aren't very good labels. It's just labeled 1 and 2. Uh, I might actually want to go back and enter labels for white and non-white and I can do this. I'm going to come back into this box and I'm going to backspace a little bit here so I get into the recode for the ones. Just put a space in for readability. I'm going to put in a double quote and the label I want attached to this particular category, which is going to be white. And I end that with, a, with another double quote. And then I'm going to do the same over here for the non-white respondents. Double quote, non-white. That looks pretty good. And now I'm going to use uh, just use the enter key. And let's see what we get over here. We get the same frequency distribution again: 85.8, 85.5% white, 14.5% non-white. But I have nice labels here to help me keep track. You know, probably not so important for this variable, but for variables that have uh, many categories, it will certainly make it easier to interpret your results by using these labels. Okay, so this shows you some of the some of the easy things to, to do with this uh, frequencies cross tabulation program, um, but we're let's look at the cross tabulation part of this now. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this whole block of text, this race and its recode, and I'm going to move it to the column box. So I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to add a new variable here, that capital punishment variable. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste in my race variable. So when I uh, use the enter key here or run the table, this is now going to produce a contingency table or a cross tabulation of these two variables. My rows will be the capital punishment variable. In this case, I'm treating that as my dependent variable. My column is going to be race, which I'm treating as my independent variable. And we'll discuss that more in class and in other videos. So let me go ahead and use the enter key here and see what we get. We can see that for all the non-white respondents, nearly 77% of the non-white respondents favor capital punishment compared to only 49% of the non-white respondents. A very large gap in uh, attitudes about capital punishment across white and non-white respondents. So that's a pretty interesting outcome. Notice that this is based on 42,450 respondents. So this only uses non-missing data for respondents that have complete data on both of these variables. They have to have their race reported. They have to have reported um, some attitude about capital punishment. If they're missing on either one of those measures, they obviously can't be included in this table. So this is covering many, many years of people's responses to the general social survey. What if I wanted to limit this and look at only the most recent data? Well, to do that, I can enter a selection filter down here in the selection filter box. I'm going to limit this to uh, year uh, equal to 2010. So to do this, I'm just going to go ahead and type in year. You can see that I've done this before, so uh, my browser remembered this. I can just sort of uh, mouse down there and click Enter, and it'll uh, put in my year 2010. Now when I use the Enter key, I'm going to rerun that cross tabulation, but it's only going to be for people who uh, the 2010 respondents. 
Notice that our percentages are pretty similar. Here we're about 73% uh, of white respondents favoring capital punishment compared to 47% of the non-white. But our sample size down here at the bottom has dropped to 1,751. That is, there were 1,751 people in 2010 who provided viable responses to both of these variables, race and capital punishment. Now, there's a lot more recoding we can do and creating variables and so forth, but we're going to leave those to another video since this one is getting kind of long. I encourage you to go to this website and uh, play with the GSS a little bit. Start looking for variables. There's a lot of interesting things in here. I pretty much guarantee that if you're taking another course, maybe in political science or a sociology course and you're writing a paper, any place in that paper where you might be um, hypothesizing or po you know making some sort of claim about public opinion, you can probably find an attitudinal variable in the general social survey related to that. And if you were to go use this uh, computer package and go ahead and create even simple frequency distributions, I suspect that your teachers would be very impressed and you'd be on your road to getting an A. That is adding a nice piece of empir empirical verification to your opinions in your paper uh, really makes your paper stronger. So go ahead and start playing with this and then we'll be using this in labs and uh, giving you some assignments to make use of SDA.